Flower Garden Bank's National Marine Sanctuary is a mouthful, and it's hard to get people excited about something they can't even remember how to say. But that's been my job since I got there. How do you get people to care about a place they're probably never going to visit because it's over 100 miles offshore? But that is beautiful and enduring and absolutely amazing at a time when coral reefs around the world are in decline. It is still as healthy today as it was when they started doing research and exploration there in the 1970s. And that is a phenomenal milestone in this day and age. It has its threats and we do have concerns for the future, but it was, it's just such a phenomenal place. And to be excited about it myself makes it easy to want to share that with others. But the challenge all along has been, how do you do that when they can't go there? If you're not a scuba diver, if you're not a fisherman, you're probably never going over 100 miles offshore to this place where you can't tell that you're there until you're there. Um, and there's a mooring buoy there for you to tie your boat off to. So unless you put your face under the water or you're catching fish from above the water, you really don't have any idea how special this place is. So from day one, my job was to find ways to make those connections. And one of the first things I did in coming on board was learn about a recent coral pouring project they had done where they actually took a drill bit, probably a three or four inches across, and they go in and they pour right down through the middle of the living coral head. Now, only the very top layer, about a quarter to a half an inch, is actually alive. The rest of it is the stony limestone skeleton underneath. And by coring through that, they pull out this rocky core that they can then slice and x-ray and examine and learn about the growth of this coral over an extended period of time. This particular core went back over 200 years. You can count the growth lines in it just like you can the tree ring when you cut down a, a tree. And scientists, they could do isotope sampling out of the different layers to tell what temperatures were during each particular year, each month of the year, if they broke it down enough, and therefore get a climate history for a place that we didn't have scientific instruments to track that kind of thing the last 200 years. And so that was fascinating to me. And I thought, this has potential to be a lesson. This is really cool stuff. So I developed uh, a lesson that's now called Coral Cores, Ocean Timeline. And uh, that has been available to teachers. Uh, but that was, you know, tying it into the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills, those school standards that are required, creating things that teachers could easily take and use immediately in the classroom and not have to do a lot of extra work for. All the things I learned as an informal educator at Moody Gardens, at SeaWorld, and that my time in the classroom and kind of combining all that into developing a great lesson that could be applied and meet certain learning objectives in the classroom.